Welcome, everybody. Uh, we are here again, the last run of the day. Apologies for the 10-minute the delay on this one. We've, we're have we trying to hunt out a bad cable. One, somewhere in our infrastructure is a bad cable, and it's causing one of our streams to have issues. So we might have some intermittent connectivity for one of our players. Uh, apologies for that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get a kickoff right away. We want to get these team, team members back to their teams as soon as we can. So uh, let's go ahead and get a countdown of five, four, three, two, one, go. And now they're off. Okay, so uh, we've already got the first one downloaded. So, and, and this particular one, actually, can you grab me my notebook over there with our, our teams and whatnot? Um, this one, we've got uh, the new organizers, and I believe we've got Team Taiwan was the name that they uh, they requested because it's again another one of these these mega teams uh, that has uh, a conglomeration of many different uh, different teams. So we've got Team Balson, Team Two One Seven, Team TSJ. Dot TW, uh, and it, so there's another team that has TW in the name that's Tokyo Westerns, right. a, a Japanese team, but this is the Taiwanese team because it's dot .TW. Right. So uh, let's Easy go ahead to and mix up. Yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, a team. I think Team Balson should be the one that I've got over here on my monitor, and they are already off, and they're in Ida uh, looking at our challenge. Now, again, you'll notice all of our challenges are named challenge, just the way that our Docker deployment kind of works. The official name of this challenge is called Nerd Sniped. Right. And so it, it, what it, are things you can get nerd sniped by? A I lot mean, of things, but uh, yeah. yeah, we'll see how that. I plays get nerd sniped out. by like a Rubik's cube. Like yeah, a good a good puzzle maybe. Yeah, a good puzzle. You can yeah. see maybe something like that. That'll do it. Uh, so yeah, so uh, we got you 1080p back and going. Hopefully, we'll figure out our uh, our issue with our our HDMI cable, and we'll have uh, much better consistent capture across both team members tomorrow. Something about this cable is like it's heating up or something. It's the first we had several hours of testing last night with no problem, and something something's going on now. So yeah. we'll 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 get that a run. And sure enough, I literally just saw a rename solve puzzle. So we've we've renamed this function solve the puzzle. Um, so what they're looking for, they know it's a puzzle of some sort. Uh, I'm curious if we get uh, someone just kind of running it and interacting with the binary, or if we're going to more static analysis. Um, but actually, yeah, this should be should be much higher quality with with the full 1080. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have even the local recordings. Were also not uh, 1080. They were only in 720 as well. So I apologize. Those first couple matches, uh, we're not gonna have uh, we're we're not gonna have the the um, uh, the higher quality video for those either. But all 12 other matches from here on out are gonna be in high def because uh, we have a lot of these to go. So you'll see your favorite players that won in the first couple rounds. They're going to come back. We're going to we're going to see them again. Uh, so, oh no, that was cool. What was I didn't I didn't notice that website. Have you seen that one before? Uh, no. I'm what? curious what that was. So now they're on the Ubuntu repo. Uh, they're getting a particular glibc version, which makes sense. That's often common. Now I think for most of these, we like included a libc if we thought it was necessary. Yes. Um, so it's kind of a hint to the teams. Like if we 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 we're we're trying to like give out everything that we could, uh, make it as self-contained as possible. And so we'll see uh, we'll, we'll we'll see if that one ends up ends up being useful. But we've got our binary challenge. Uh, this one is starting to to be a little bit more difficult, though. I would I would say yeah, our, our, our challenge uh, difficulty is cranking up yes. a tiny bit. Uh, and we're going to see that kind of trend throughout the whole the whole rest of the weekend. Right. I'm sure we'll have some easier ones. Some that somebody finds an amazing solution to, solves it quickly. Yeah. But on the topic of like difficulty, like that's. I mean, we have an idea of like what's more difficult and what's easier and so on, but uh, of course, like we can be wrong. Like people can have like different, uh, you know, specializations in their skill sets and uh, and so on. So something that we might think is in, in both directions, right? Yeah, right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes. So uh, something that we might think uh, is uh, easy might be actually kind of tricky, and then the other way around. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see what's what's going on. There's still some reverse, in, like the initial reverse engineering going on of the. Program, for example, this kind of step uh, was not really needed in the previous challenge, where we just gave them the full source code uh, yes. with like names and everything. Um. And and it is a uh, yeah. As an organizer, you have a lot of levers to pull. You have a lot. Of, it's, it's ironic because we have the organizers here yeah, up, yeah, uh, playing, yeah. although unfortunately they're on our, our non capture screen. Unfortunately, um, I just had to make sure that we had them lined up right. I freaked out for a second, not realizing. Yes, yes they are. They are on the right halves. Um, but uh, the team organizers, uh, we're not seeing them. But as a challenge organizer, as somebody making challenges, 
you can strip a binary, you cannot strip a binary, you can include debug symbols, you cannot have any, you know, so all these. Yeah, different um, levels of optimizations. Yeah. So like, because a lot of optimization also kind of acts as a slight, like, obfuscation. Mild as well. the obfuscation, yeah, yeah. So, um, you, you, we have all seen these, like, you know, optimized uh, mem copies and everything, but you have all these, like, bit oh, magic stuff going on. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, yeah you get vec vector operations in your, in your mem copies. Right. And it's, it's so. Um, yeah, and that's yeah. and that's where to some degree you can make uh, an easy challenge hard with just tedious things. Mm, yeah. So it is interesting that you see a lot of sort of like I, I would say cheap challenge design where it's like yeah we just made it harder by doing X. Right. And it didn't make it more interesting. It just made it like yeah just slightly more annoying to do the thing that you want. So it's sometimes a really good easy challenge is actually like you're just really focusing on that one core thing that you want you want to do, yeah. uh, which makes a lot of fun for for what we're doing here. So. Right. Uh, so still at that um, reverse engineering, trying to name different things. We've seen like they name the functions like solve puzzle, and you see some variables getting named like the input. Um, it's all trying to like get get an understanding of what is this program doing, uh, and there are kind of like two parts to it. Like first of all, like what's the um, intended functionality yeah. of the program, yeah. and then from there you can start to understand. Uh, in in what way is it acting uh, not as intended? Like where's yeah. the bug? Or or well, in this case, where where the, the the author intended a bug. Right. But in the normal case, where it's unintended vulnerabilities, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or in this case, what's the surface level intended? What's it what's it claim to be able to do? Yes. Uh, and then what is it what does it actually do that maybe that may be different? Right. So let's see uh, what we're doing. So I, and this is nice too because we're actually getting. This is the first time we've seen a little reverse engineering workflow. Yes, right? a lot of the other ones have been like basically a quick glance at the code or disassembly has kind of like revealed what's going on. Yeah. Here they actually need to kind of understand what is going on. Okay, so we're still sort of starting our framework for our our exploit here, but I don't. I think it's just getting the menus and interacting with it, right? And so we're looking. Oh, okay. So there's a current puzzle state. All right. So Puzzle. That puzzle looked interesting. That looked yes. like maybe uh, like a nine by nine grid. Yes. Of numbers. numbers. Yeah. yeah. It could be uh, maybe like a Sudoku. I I think that's a great guess. And yeah. of course, you know, we're a little a little spoiled here, a little tainted <laughs> knowledge. But th it, this is indeed a Sudoku. Uh, in fact, when we when when somebody was like kind of play testing and validating this challenge, we sort of were like, wait a minute, you just you just solve a Sudoku and that's yeah. it. And the author was like, no 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 no, <laughs> that's not actually not actually possible. Uh, so it is a little bit trickier than that. So we'll see as our teams discover, um, it's not just a straight, put it into a Sudoku solver, get a correct answer, and win. Um, it is going to be a little bit more tricky. And this is one I am almost positive we're going to need a hint on. Right. So I'm, I'm going to propose at like 15 minutes in, if yeah. we don't see... Um, like progress. Progress. And in fact, actually, let's, why don't you go ahead and take a take a look at the organizers, maybe yes, too. Yes, I will do that. And if we if we're looking for them to to uh, kind of have a hint as to what they're doing, like indicate that they know what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, does it come on occasionally? Okay. So it's apparently flickering in and out. Occasionally, we're getting getting our video. We we swapped out the capture card that worked for a while until it didn't, uh, and then we swapped out the USB C cable and that worked for a while until it didn't. And so now we're convinced that it's just the HDMI cable itself uh, that, is, that is causing trouble. And I think this has been true even if we were direct wired into the laptop. So it's not the capture on the other side. Yes, because we also did swap out the, uh, the USB-C adapter once too. So we've swapped every component except the, the HDMI cable, uh, partly because they're like taped to the floor and they're a 30-foot long cable. So we got to go and get some. Oh, there we go. I saw a... I did see a solver pop up briefly. I saw a Sudoku yeah, solver. Yeah, I was just going to say, uh, yeah. so the player from the organizers copy-pasted the uh, current state of the puzzle into, and they Googled for a Sudoku solver. Um, so we'll see to what extent that will help them. Um, it's, I mean, again, I'm not completely familiar with the intended solution here, but I would assume that it still involves like yes. sol solving the Sudoku, but not only doing that. It, so it, it is trickier than that. That's, yes. that yeah, that's right. So um, I have a little bit more info. Um, yeah, we're still seeing that that kind of solver flash in and out uh, occasionally um, on the on the display. So uh, it it there's going to be some memory corruption here. Yeah, there, there is indeed. This is not just now. Although I will say, it is actually a perfectly valid category of challenge in a lot of CTFs, right? Where you would actually do have a more programming challenge or a puzzle, like that, yeah. that happens. And yeah. I think 
Honestly, even in moderation, I think those can be fun and enjoyable. Yes. Mixed in amongst your traditional like happy competition. Yeah. Typically, they are branded as uh, PPC. It's the category in, in normal uh, CTFs, which I think is like professional programming challenge or something like this. Uh, people familiar with like, you know, ICPC style yep. uh, algorithms competitions or so might find. Although usually they're kind of like framed uh, slightly differently. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's kind of like the same uh, general idea there. Yeah, and there's there's no security flaw. There's right. really just rather solving some hard mathematical problem with the, with the right algorithm or with the yeah. right approach yeah. uh, to to, to kind of get it working. Right. So, but yep. that's not the case here. Like there's there's an aspect of that, but that's not enough. We are doing right. this is a, this is truly a pointable. There is memory corruption involved. Uh, yeah. Although I will say, and I'm looking to see if somebody finds. Um, the the sort of like win function like when you have a correct solve ct uh, correct solve sudoku um i think we're going to see like so this this function here uh they've named it check returns right whether or not we've successfully calculated the value um a, a valid uh uh solve this uh the result of that is going to determine basically what you call a win function so it is going to kind of do the win for you so you already sort of, you know that you have to solve it. Right. Your just question is, okay, what mechanic will actually get me to solve it? And can I cheat it? Do I have to have a combination of a solver plus yeah. a cheat? Like what, what, what is that, that ratio going to yeah. entail? Because at face value, it kind of looks like you just solve the Sudoku and you win. Yeah, but, but uh, you know, like yeah. Yeah, DEF CON finals, even, even being a, you know, a sort of easy live CTF, yes. I, would, I would think people would be like, nah, wait a minute. Like there's, there's something here. And yeah. I, I think if you can also, uh, there's not a lot of, uh, values here, and so I don't know, like, I think the idea is that th this, these are just not solvable because there's not enough information in there. Like, some Sudoku balls are very minimal, but they're designed to be solved, right? right. They're made to be solvable. I think I that. remember that, like, if you have 13 digits, you're guaranteed to have oh, a is that so? Here we go. So solution. One, two, three. Okay, so this one definitely has more than that, but okay. there's going to be some other issues yeah. with it still. I'm, I'm it not is, sure if my trivia is, is, is correct, but I, I, I vaguely remember, like, if you have 13 digits, you have a unique solution. You can have a unique solution with fewer digits, but so it's not guaranteed. It, I don't know that that's true, because I can just give you all of the ones, for example, and all of but the that's twos. Just nine. And, all, and all the twos, and that doesn't give you enough information to know where all the numbers, other numbers are. Uh, Maybe, maybe no, in terms no, of like no, because like you can no. So it's high. It's maybe it's twenty one or something. Then I, there is a number. I would I'm believe just it. Calling, I'm just uh, you know. Where's where's our cracking the cryptic? Uh, oh phone yeah. Of friends. Uh, yes. And go to the the, <laughs> the YouTube uh, stream. Yeah, great, uh, great channel. So so here we go. We're seeing uh, Sudoku Solver Python. So we're, we're we're seeing people investigate that. All right, we are now fifteen minutes in. Yes. I think we should be preparing our hint because I actually think this one is a little too subtle, and we're gonna have to point them. Um, in the right direction, yes. Uh, without actually giving them the thing, so yeah. And we uh, should notice notice now that even though uh, the time is like uh, twenty four, right? Like five twenty four. We started a ten bit minutes late, late. Yep. because of technical difficulties. So yep. they are only fifteen minutes into the challenge. Correct, correct. So we have we have more more time than the, the clock looks like compared to the other ones where we started much closer to uh, to on time. So uh, we're trying a solver again. So so trying a solver on here, which is not going to be sufficient. So I, I think we need to figure out if there is an official hint from the challenge author. So we've got uh, Glenn over in <coughs> in the production booth, uh, <laughs> as it were, which is otherwise known as the other side of the table that we're sitting on here. Yeah. Um, is it, gonna is gonna reach out and see if we have an official. We have like three times the number of computers compared to the number of crew members for this uh, setup. We have a lot of displays yeah. and I mean. An order of magnitude more cables, I think, than uh, yeah. But it's uh, and once we once we find out what is breaking our our, our secondary capture, uh, and so actually speaking of which, I'm gonna go ahead and go take a look at the organizers. I want to see if they're making progress. Right. Uh, while we figure out what we're doing with that uh, with that hint, yeah. If we're gonna give it, um, and if the chat, if you guys have any questions uh, about where we're going, uh, let us know. Yep. Uh, and uh, I'll be back with an update. Great. Um, so while uh, Jordan does that, uh, we can try to uh, see is uh, that uh, we... Oh, okay, so I've just been informed that uh, the puzzle that, the, uh, that you were given 
is impossible to solve. That's the kind of the trick here. So at face value, everything looks fine. You just need to solve this Sudoku, but actually there is no solution. This is like an invalid state uh, for the Sudoku. Uh, so uh, once they, and this is something that can really throw you off, right? Because if you uh, take this and like you put it into a solver or something and the solver says like, nah, there's no solution, you might be starting to think like maybe the solver has a bug or like some maybe my in the format of my input is, is wrong or something like this um it, and, and only later you might question the like the impossibility of the puzzle um so this is where they have to then cheat to solve the impossible sudoku uh, to then get this win function um we can see here on on, on the balson screen that uh they are looking still at the kind of uh, decompilation here, um, thinking hard about this, uh, trying to figure out like wh what is going on here, like why is this not working? Um, they have this, it's, it's, it's this check function, right? Uh, so they're trying to think about like what, in what way does this function not behave uh, correctly, maybe. Uh, maybe they have uh, realized that, like, you're given an impossible uh, puzzle. Um, so let's see. They're gonna try to. Seems like they're writing like a small like formatting uh, function. They're looping through like the x and y axes and and, and uh, printing uh, something. Um, so yeah. Um, Still unsure exactly where they're going with that, but let's see in here now they run it. So, so, oh, okay. so, so a quick update is both teams are taking this sort of wrong approach now, and they're still looking for solves. So the hint they're both going to get is you can't win, you need to cheat. Right. Uh, which is uh, almost feel like there's some kind of deeper philosophical uh, thing. I here. mean, it's, it's a true life statement, yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah that's... Uh, um, yeah, I, I had a lot of thoughts about that, but let's not <laughs> go too, too off too topic. Too deep yeah. and too, yeah. Um, I, you know. So here's the other question. Do we want to give them a little bit more of a hint? Um, do we want to tell them exactly kind of how, uh, like give them more of a hint as to what they want to check? No, I think we have time, right? No, no, we have time. Uh, let's do that. And uh, yeah, in fact, well, that's too late now. Uh, I mean, I was thinking in, the t in terms of like, since this is the last match of the day, we could have afforded, like, you know, extending the um, standard game time. But, yeah, but I don't know it's, if it's fair to do that once. Well, uh, we do it to the same two players. Either way, it's, it's only fair relative to each other. Because every match is different. Different challenges, different conditions. And so to some degree... Right, right. So um, you that could argue matter. that it, it's fair. But, but, but uh, let's see. You can't yeah. win. You need to cheat. You need memory corruption. Yes. Uh, it's dangerous to go alone. Like take this yeah, memory corruption. Take this, it's dangerous to go alone. <laughs> take this memory corruption. I love it. Um, All right. Here goes the first hint. Yes. We'll see if this gets them on the right track again or if we need to. Uh, In the meantime, I'm trying to decipher what this uh, script is doing. They have a solve function there, which then will not really help them since you can't solve this. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's it's still like, you know, a little bit unclear where the players are in this. Unfortunately, we can't read the minds of the players. That would be uh, immensely helpful uh, when doing this type of commentary. We can just try to guess based on what we're seeing on the screen. So, and yeah, again, like if you have any uh, questions or comments from, from the, all of you watching this. I got uh, some smiles. I wish you all could have seen it, but there was like, oh yeah, uh, yeah of course. Okay, okay. So yeah, they both, yeah. They were both, you know, going down the solver approach. So I, I think we're going to see a lot more Ida now. Right. Uh, we're going to see them actually dig into the binary. Right. Uh, and, and follow it that way. So that's, that's, all, that's nice to, to hear that, like, the, the hint was uh, appropriately leveled and that it was uh, useful to the players. Yeah, I think they both, they both were at a, at a spot where it's going to help both of them. We'll see if either one starts to... Starts to uh, take advantage of that or not. Okay, yeah, so we're looking at check stack, we're looking at the binary properties, seeing is, you know, yes. and that's actually a great habit to be in too. I really yeah. think that a lot of people overlook that. Again, we saw that last one with the, with the mallard, with the ducks, where, yeah. uh, like, it not being randomized, uh, I think added a little bit extra slowdown there. Right, yes, definitely. Uh, because you so could have gone straight into, uh, you know. Yeah, this is, I, I, I think I, I have this as a 
pretty good habit. Like, always run file, always run check sec. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. It's kind of like when you're doing reversing, uh, uh, reversing uh, engineering challenges. Always run strings. strings. Always bin walk. Yeah. Just like. Just add a habit. Yeah. It's just like the things that you, things that you do. Right. All right. So let's let's watch this. Okay. So now, yeah. Now we're seeing them actually where we want them. Now they're back to reverse engineering. They're looking for vulnerabilities. Uh, and and what they're going to do is they're going to use the vulnerability to win. They're going to use the memory corruption uh, to get to 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 not code execution directly, right. but to the win state. So what they're going to do is they're going to need to corrupt in such a way that they can create a solved board. And they, they should hopefully still remember this, right? Because they know that the point was to win. They saw that. They saw the win. They saw the win state. They saw that's why they were trying to solve the puzzle. So I think they know that. Yeah. The question is. Uh, are they going to uh, be able to figure out the memory corruption in time? So that's the question that we're and, looking for. And this is kind of interesting, I think, uh, this type of pwnable where, like a lot of pwnables, you have kind of this like standard workflow where you try to uh, gain control of certain aspects of memory. Yeah, yeah, you're trying, it's, it's, always, it's a pointer overwrite, or right. it's something that gets you a memory write, so you right. can get a pointer overwrite. Like so to a ROP chain, to yeah. like, you know, um, but here you're just doing kind of like uh, maybe we would call it like a local memory corruption. You're yeah. just like or or it's it's not quite a logic vulnerability in that it is memory corruption, but yeah, it's exactly. not useful. It's not being used for control flow right. hijacking. You're using it specifically to just change the behavior change the of the state and change yeah. the behavior. That, yeah, the, the functionality through its its normal legitimate means, but by entering a memory state that it did intend for you to enter. Right. So. In a lot of these cases, for example, like the program wouldn't crash, for example, with the, like if the exploit is like slightly. Yeah, wrong. you just you just fail to get a correct yeah. puzzle. It's just not solved, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, which is not to say that they couldn't crash no, no, with no. this vulnerability necessarily. Totally. It depends on how it's actually constructed. Yes. But there are there are certainly use cases, or there are cases where you know an exploit isn't actually exploitable in the in the co you know direct uh, code execution state. It is rather just. By exercising some other right. logical state of the program, and I think uh, in general, like what everything we say here about like the you know pwnables and, and like general ideas, there are a lot of like ifs and buts and stuff like to all of these and exceptions. But you know, we're trying to you know make some broad strokes here about different types of challenges. I'm a little nervous. This one feels like that we the first one we might have to unleash a sudden death. I'm hoping we don't. Right. Um, um, but I, and, and and I like the challenge because like you know like we're talking about. I think it, it has that that good twist mm, that yeah. you're gonna not get a a pointer over right, but you're gonna like you know influence the state of the binary. So I'm hoping. And we've got we've seen great work from all the teams so far. So we know we have high quality people. Uh, we'll see how it's going. This is also, I said, the, one of the larger binaries. We all get very small binaries, very, very self-contained. Yeah. This was a little bigger. It's still, I think, small on the CTF scale of things, which in CTF is smaller than real-world binaries. Oh yeah. But relative to the live CTF binaries, this is this is larger than, than some of them. Yeah. Luckily, they don't have to like sift through a 300 megabyte uh, binary. Uh. What? <laughs> Who doesn't love? Yeah. Yeah. Sorting out uh, massive binaries. Yeah, I think I remember. Opening the Minecraft binary in IDA at some point. Uh, the, then I went to bed and uh, yeah, continued the day it's after. Still, yeah. yeah no, I, I think I mean, it was like just barely finished, but it took like eight or nine hours to analyze that. Yeah, a, a big yeah. binary or even like obfuscated binaries can can take a long time to analyze for sure. Yeah. Oh, here we go. So let's look. We're seeing an int 64 ints. So, making sure the types are. Correct. That is a, that's that's good. I think I think uh, analyzing the types is useful. Although what I will say is that just looking at decompiled code is maybe not the best way to analyze any kind of type issues, right? No, I think it's like it's a good it's a good start to give you the big picture, uh, and uh, but then at some point you might have to drill down uh, on things. And I think this is also kind of interesting again with like different types of. Uh, Pwnable challenges, like uh, some pwnable challenges, like the bug is obvious and the exploitation is difficult. Absolutely. And then you have these more like reversing heavy pwnables, where like yep. you have to figure out like very complex data structure. But once you have kind of sorted everything out, the bug just like appears, uh, yeah. and and then from there it's typically not that hard. Or yes. Yeah. And I think our our previous examples, uh, several of our previous challenges, were more on the side of like it's obvious 
where the bug was, but actually landing it was, was sort of the tricky. Like, right. we just let you run syscalls. Yes. But which ones? That's the tricky part. Like, actually, your, your payload, the execution. Same thing with, like, not coding. Like, we just ran your bytes. Sort of, you had to, like, do that. It's, mm. I think those, those sort of, like, shell coding heavy and those sort of, like, constrained environments are some of my favorite yep. challenges. Um, probably because I'm just bad at the, like, the more, uh, I don't want to say tedious, but the more in-depth, Right. Long term reverse Complex, engineering. Uh, yeah. either rever so, I mean, I'm more of a reverse engineer myself, so like, yeah. I like those things. But then, for example, when you get to, to these like, you know, complex heap exploitation things, then I'm, you know, completely, uh, you know, out of luck there. Well, there's always just, you know, kind of familiarity and, and experience with it. One of the things I was going to mention, um, and, and I say this, that I don't do the rever heavy, reversing heavy ones as an author of a reverse yeah. engineering tool. Well, maybe that's why you built the tool, right? That, well, that's <laughs> also, also why I have coworkers who are much better <laughs> than, than I am. That's the other, I highly recommend that approach. Um, so the, but the, one of the things that I was going to comment on is that I like, one of the things that Ghidra I think really does well, that a lot of uh, um, uh, both Ida and Binja have actually changed as a result is their side-by-side -side view. Having the synchronized side-by-side -side decompilation with this assembly, I think was a really important improvement in kind of like the standard workflow. And so now you'll see Ida and Binja both have much better Split pane synchronization, that, those kind of workflows, very much inspired. I mean, you know, we're, I assume Ilfac also was was inspired and was like, oh yeah, that's a, you know, yeah. I like the way the Gator does that too. But I, certainly for from from Binja's perspective, like we definitely did that as well. Yeah. Um, so I do think it's it's good seeing difference. Oh, here we go. We've got. Uh, I don't know. Is that the same? That's just the same screen. Um, but we are. So they're looking at libc. Uh uh, trying to download like the appropriate libc version, right? Yeah. So they're using this um, web page where you can like put in uh, offsets for uh, different uh, functions to like uh, yep. to match up with yeah, like fingerprint yeah. uh, the libc version and then download it. So uh, most of the times, I think you need like two offsets, and then it will match to uh, which version of libc is running. So again, when we're building these challenges. If we don't think they need libc, we are not providing it. Now that's not true in all competitions, though. So no. you know they may not yes. trust us yet. Right? I think this is like it is a convention among I would say like experienced uh, organizers within this. Right, because you, why make that it's an extra fun. tedious step yeah. that it's just it just mechanical and you just yes. go to the we all know about the website. We all know how you would do that. However. If you come up with a solution that's different than the intended one, you might have a solution which does require absolutely, libc, and then you might go this absolutely. route anyway. Yeah, uh, yeah. So. so it's it's not necessarily bad. It is just it should be a hint that maybe you're not taking the intended route. Right. Yeah. Doesn't mean that you're wrong, but you might be venturing into like unknown territory. All right. So let's be thinking about our next tent because, like I said, I'm a little concerned. We might need to do a different one. Yes. Um, I don't know. Triple tap control and get the. Uh, get the spoken dictation pop up. <laughs> um, I'm going to go. Oh, nope. That's nope, just somebody else in the background excited about something. Yeah. I thought for a second we had a <laughs> surprise win off screen. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and check in with, uh, or was it organizers is, is organizers. Organizers uh, is, is unfortunately yes. not being captured. Uh, so we're kind of in the dark there. Uh, so I'm going to see if I can get a little bit more of an insight. Hopefully we're making good progress there and I can come back with a little bit of an update. Yep. Um, and then maybe then go ahead with some hint then ba based on current status. Uh, so um, yeah, again they're looking at like um, figuring out like libc versions or downloading uh, like an Ubuntu image. I'm not entirely sure what's going on there, uh, but yeah, uh, we'll we'll see if we can manage to kind of like see what, what in what direction they're going with with this. Um, yeah, I. Uh, it's it, it would be very interesting to see like if they have kind of figure out where uh, where this check function is going on. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have like the reference uh, solution, so I'm not like super familiar with like exactly where it's where like where it's doing something incorrect. But um, yeah, it's. Uh, also going to be interesting to hear then what, what the, the organizers are up to if they have good progress. So we're also kind of a little bit in the in the dark uh, on that, but um, hopefully um, 
we I think we are going to give them a hint. Uh, I see uh, Jordan and uh, Ben are discussing a little bit, but what's the exact hint that we want to give them here to, to you know, uh, point them in the right direction? Uh, it's, yeah, we can see here in the uh, uh, lower, lower corner here, we have from time to time, we have uh, the organizer's screen like flickering in and out. Uh, unfortunately, that's the tech situation right now. And uh, in the meantime, I can give you a little bit of an update on the combined scoreboard for the, for the DEF CON CTF. Uh, we have still like a fairly tight race. Uh, we have a span of about 18,000 points for the, the leaders, Katsubin, down to 14,000 uh, points for the team in 16th place. So definitely still, like everyone is definitely still in the game. Uh, with top three being Katsubin, uh, MMM and Perfect Roots. And they are all within like, you know, less than uh, some percent or so uh, of each other. So it's, it's uh, or maybe like 10% uh each other so yeah definitely a, a good uh good competition there um, so um Sorry, Jor guys, jordan yeah. is coming back here so All what's right. the status what's so, uh organizers doing uh we're gonna need some hints they're they're both still looking i don't see any kind of progress right. so we're gonna we're gonna drop a hint yes um the hint that we're gonna there's a couple of hints we considered one is have you considered fuzzing <laughs> because literally just sending in a bunch of a bunch of bites will actually um cause overwrite your your uh your, your your game state yes all right so that's the key thing that they need to figure out that if they send in just a, a too big of a solution it will actually corrupt the the state and they'll get weird boards boards and then it's a matter of oh okay how do i now create a board that would be solvable right so one that we considered the other one was um don't let yourself be boxed in to your solution it's a sudoku puzzle that's a little probably more obscure so yeah um i think we're going to go with just um how big, how, like, how big is your solution again, question mark? Or how yeah. many bytes is your solution, question mark? Um, as, our, as our next hint. And I think we're gonna need to give them that because there's still some work to be done. Right. Um, and we want to, to give them both a shot at getting it. Otherwise, we're gonna go to our sudden death. So that's yes. the hint we're gonna go with. In the meantime, we had a comment here from, from KGF. Uh, these seems interesting sea challenges. I think I will try them all, but I'm sure I would take a lot longer. Long. I would too, yeah. so that's okay. But it, it is uh, like a, a good idea, uh, I mean, in, in general for CTFs to like uh, try out challenges after they've been solved. Uh, normally for a lot of, of uh, CTFs, people publish uh, write-ups. So you can like try the challenges uh, that you didn't manage to solve uh, and then kind of use like a write-up or so as a, as a reference and then and guide your attempt as well to, to learn more. Um, I uh, think the idea is that we are releasing all the challenges. Uh, it might uh, take a few days for us to uh, recover from this uh, weekend. We have 15 matches, so another 11 matches uh, to go after this one. Uh, but yeah, we'll, the, we will definitely publish them. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, you can even like, you know, organize your own like mini uh, uh, tournament in your own, uh, you know, CTF team or, uh, you know, hacker space. Uh, uh, I know that I heard from before the competition that uh, Shellfish actually did some practice uh, for this tournament uh, by doing like a small uh, mini competition uh, of their own within the team, which and I it, think it, is really it cool. paid off. It, it, at least it, it appears did. it paid I mean, off. Those, they were as, as yeah. a, one of the winning teams. Yeah, we'll see how far they can go. Um, so uh, we have the hints prepared. Jordan is going to go and hand that off to the players. Uh, we are, what's the clock at? So we are, so, so 5.45, so we are 35 minutes into the game, which is mean that we are running uh, up like against the sudden death uh, clock here. Uh, let's see if they can manage to figure out this. On the other hand, this is also kind of a similar situation to the previous challenge where we were 35 minutes into the game and then uh, it kind of just like clicked for one of the players and they managed to go all the way. So. Uh, uh, it's going to be really exciting to see what's going on. Still a bit difficult to kind of like get a read on uh, Balson's progress or like their understanding of the, they're kind of like looking at the code, probably thinking very hard about, you can see like the mouse moving around, trying to build this mental model of what's, what's going on. You're like kind of like running the code in your head. 
you know, what if this has this value, like how does it's, that It's propagate? probably the least interesting part of a live CTF, right? That's the only downside when you have a more reverse engineering heavy yes. challenge. Yes, uh, Is that you're just seeing people like maybe name stuff if you're lucky or add yeah. comments, but most of the time it's just looking at it. Right. Uh, and what we, you know, when you know you're getting closer when you start seeing a crash and a debugger and a payload being written, yeah. uh, and we don't have it yet. I'm going to go ahead and keep an eye on uh, the organizers just briefly. Yeah. And see if we get any kind of that similar pro progress. Right, so we have, um, Oh, okay. okay, we did have a comment somebody else pointed out. Thank you for clarifying. Um, the reason that, that somebody was looking for the Libc was to actually run it, because if you don't have the same VM uh, handy, you can't run that uh, Libc. So you can just grab the Libc from another another version uh, of Linux to be able to run the binary. So that is another, a completely valid reason that you might do that. Um, yes. Probably just easier to maybe look at a previous stream, or I, have we actually, I don't think we told people what platform that most of our challenges, all of our challenges were created on. That's actually a good note Yeah. So for future for future things we should, because that's again, normal in a, in a CTF, happens all the time. You have to figure out the OS that it was created for, match version information and whatnot. Right. Not our intention to make that part of the challenge no. here. And it's the thing, it's like uh, Ubuntu 22 was re recent, somewhat recently went in like LTS uh, release, mean, and uh, a lot of people haven't uh, updated to that yet. Um, I. Uh, you know, I, I will accept like shared responsibility on this because like, you know, update your computers, people. Uh, but 2004, yeah. 2204 would probably be the Ubuntu, it's most, you know, common or Debian. Yeah. Uh, certainly it's it's frequently, but all right, I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at the audiences. I'll be back and we'll see how it's gone. Awesome. So, um, I was talking about something um, when it comes to these challenges. Um, trying to get back on, 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 you know, my train of thought there um, with, uh, oh yes, so, you know, uh, with this like, uh, looking at another player, looking at code, trying to figure things out. Uh, a lot of times when I talk to people um, who are, you know, not experienced CTF players or don't know what CTFs are, uh, you often get the question, it was like, oh, is this some kind of like esports thing? Or like, could you, could you make this into some kind of like, uh, esports thing, and to an extent, this is kind of what we're trying to do here. Uh, but of course, it, it has its shortcomings. That like some aspects of CTF um, is kind of like watching someone else take a maths exam. Uh, it's you know occasionally not the most exciting. So we're uh, really trying to by adding this commentary and trying to understand what the players are doing. We're trying to make this an interesting and educational experience for all of you. Um, viewers uh, there. Um, so I, I, I hope you uh, do uh, enjoy this and that you're going to have some takeaways and definitely check out the challenges uh, afterwards uh, to also kind of get a feel for uh, that's, you know, it might, some of these might seem simple, but when you're sitting here and actually trying to do it, you have to consider and take into account all these like small little details like if you just out off by one, like a small bit somewhere, like the whole thing uh, doesn't work, uh, you need to do all this troubleshooting, debugging. Uh, and uh, I think I mentioned it earlier, but like when you're writing exploits, you are essentially, it's like software development, but with your like hands tied behind your back, you don't get like all the nice tools and helps and error messages that you get like during normal software development uh, processes where, you know, you have all of these modern uh, tools to help you, but here you're kind of like, you're trying to bend something in, in, in a way that was not like intended to be used. You're messing with like a state of memory um, and so on. So it's, you really have like everything stacked uh, against you. And uh, that is like a big part of the challenge when doing these uh, ponables, these memory corruption uh, challenges. Um, looking here at the code here, we can see that uh, the Balsam player is writing some small helper function here to send a number. Uh, maybe they're going to try to, you know, use this to try to send a different num amount, different number of numbers, and uh, you know, see if they get a kind of any kind of reaction uh, out of that. Um, haven't really seen yet what. Oh, so now they're going to send like a thousand zeros. That's that's interesting. Um, so I have a comment here like, yeah, it's unsolvable. Yeah, like the Sudoku itself is unsolvable. And that's kind of like the twist of this whole thing that, uh, you know, at face value, you just uh, solve the Sudoku and win, uh, but then it's it's unsolvable. So 
uh, yeah, that's kind of like the recap for, for people just recently tuning in. And speaking of recap, just to tell you again a little bit about what we're doing here. So we're here uh, in Vegas uh, on site at DEF CON. So organizing this live CDF as part of the um, official DEF CON CDF. So this is kind of like a sub event where all the 16 uh, participating teams uh, participate in this like single elimination knockout tournament where in each match uh, the teams send one player to go um, head to head uh, against the other team to be the first one to solve a uh, relatively simple uh, CTF uh, challenge. I mean, relatively is relative. Yes, yes, and that's. So, I, I really want to stress relative. And, and I want to be clear: I wouldn't personally solve half of the ones that we're fielding in the allotted time. Uh, I we you know tried some of them, and it you know I could get them, but maybe take a little bit a little bit longer. So uh, I have a lot of respect for these people. They're all very very good, and they're dealing with the pressure of being on camera. There's a crowd standing around them watching them. It is. Uh, it, oh, it can be. Cool. It can be pretty nerve wracking. So uh, I'm predicting. Well, that is quite the visual effect there. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know uh, the photosensitivity warnings here. Uh, <laughs> I think it's only on our monitor. I don't see it on no, the stream. No, no. It's, it's, it's on, it's on well. stream as well. Yes, we have some. Yeah. So glitching. not sure what that's about. Uh, feels like our whole uh, infrastructure is slowly melting. Uh, so we no, will. No, no. Uh, it's fine. It's stay with us. Wow. That is. That is unusual. Yep. Um, Maybe we're getting hacked by the players, like through the HDMI cables. They're, they're playing the other game, the yes. other the other CTF yeah. challenge. I mean, we would you be know. lying if we would say that we did not have a discussion about like what shenanigans could the teams yeah, and, try to pull off and how we would yeah, yeah yeah measure against it or what we would do. So doing that kind of like threat uh, threat analysis uh, or uh, threat modeling uh, against. Yeah. We have three more minutes. We have wow. three more minutes wow. until it's gone. It's been a very fast 45 minutes. It's looking unlikely um, uh, that either one. I did see some some debugger action. Yes. Um, I'm going to make one last pass. If we see somebody very close, so they're, they're making progress, we might be able to give them just a little bit extra. But basically, we're about ready to deploy. Or if they obviously want to extend it. Um, that's not a bad idea. We can both ask both. If they both say they want to extend it, We'll let them go because they're the last one. Yeah, and if, if so, the rules are: if one of them says they don't like, they want to go sudden death, then we, we go, go sudden death. death. If that, both exactly of them want to right. extend it, then it's fine. Exactly right. I'll um, go see what they say. But yeah. ask them like, you know, independent, like, you know, one, one on one, like, to not give any like pressure. Yeah, I mean, it would it would be cool to see a solution on this, and I think we do since we have been keeping up with the schedule, we do have that kind of time. But again, the uh, yeah, it's it's difficult to 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 say what the players want. Like this is also kind of like a kind of game theory thing. Like, do you want to go to sudden death or not? Like, it's a high risk uh, environment, right? When you're going to do this super fast, uh, do you think that you because you also you don't know the progress of the other player? Like, do you think you have better progress than the other player in this challenge right now? And if you don't. Do you think you have a better chance of beating them in the sudden death one versus catching up with them in the current challenge? It's uh, definitely not an easy uh, decision uh, to make by the players. So, uh, what's uh, what's the verdict? What do you think? Uh, what would you if you're in their shoes? Oh no, I would say extend it. Absolutely. Uh, yes. Okay. Absolutely. Nice. So Absolutely. we have a game here. Yeah. So uh, they, I'm I'm happy with this because yeah. I don't want to change the rules yeah. in a way that they're unhappy with, but. Yes. They both want to solve it. I, I mean, nobody wants to give up on a no, challenge. No, 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 no. That you've been working hard, that you started, you have a little bit of an idea. Right. I'm glad. I really want to see them see this through. Yes. We'll let them go. It's the last one of the day, so we're not running over anything else. Um, I'm actually kind of excited. No, 100%. So, uh, story related to that. So, I was playing in the qualifiers for the DEF CON uh, CTF with uh, our Scandinavian uh, team, Norse Code. And I was basically sitting uh, all weekend with one challenge. Uh, so, I mean, I, I took breaks and met some friends and stuff, but there was a lot of hours. This uh, was Paris challenge? There was, this was Paris yeah. challenge. It was the uh, crypto pwnable thing. Uh, so after, I don't know if I spent, uh, if, I don't remember if it was like 10, 20 or 30 hours on this, but regardless, I uh, solved it like two minutes after the, the CTF ended. Yep. And that, uh, yeah, I on, mean. On the one hand, it's crushing. And on the other hand, though, you still solved it. Yes. You still solved yes. it. And that's the thing, like, when when the time ran out, like, I could have just stopped because, like, we, it, it doesn't matter anymore. Like, we're not going to get any points. But I I was so close. I did want, not want to stop there. Yep. Yeah. 
So the only kind of like um, saving grace for, or what you want to call it for that was that in the end, solving that challenge or not would not have affected whether we qualified or not. That, that, that would, would have, have been crushing. That's yes. a little demoralizing. Yes, yeah, yes. when it would have been, it would have been the difference. Luckily, even yeah. if with those points, we wouldn't, we would have been just below the qualifying limits. Yeah. So. so at least, at least you had clarity there, there either way. Yeah, I, I was comfortable with that. That was fine. And also that means that, you know, I could, uh, uh, be part of this uh, without having to like uh, betray uh, the, the team, right? So, uh, yeah, All turned right. out okay. So we are. There's a question here about uh, whether it was NCAT. No, it, this was the. Uh, it oh. was a crypto pawnable uh, challenge. Uh, was it was about like a function closure thing. Uh, C plus plus. We could go ask. Yeah, Perry. She's somewhere. So she was. She just was in the room. She just left. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I've heard a number of people that that worked on that. It uh, was a great challenge. Like yeah. I, I, I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, but it was tough. Okay. So. We we don't have a hard time limit now. Now it's basically we're just going to let it go until either we are convinced it's going to take way too long, or yep. uh, you know we're, we'll 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 see at this point. But they both want to keep going. I would love for one of them to get it. It not only means we get to save one of our sudden deaths, um, but I think it's just way more fulfilling for them and for the audience to see kind of like the yes. the yes. hard one the hard one solved. So we're looking forward to it. Um, it is interesting that we've got Rock Gadget address just kind of coming. Out. I, it looks like it looks like a template. I think that this existed because yeah, hopefully I, they have an idea that that is. But we are seeing like one. someone is writing something very deliberate here, right? This is like a pr to print out the board somehow. But um, let's see, they are trying to see. I mean, this this like double loop there is to print out some state, but the, that part above. You see something where they're like cutting off. They're swapping. All right. Oh, is this just to generate a valid generate a, a uh, solution that they? I mean, they I want? would just search the internet for solve Sudoku board and copy and paste it. But but if that is what they're doing, that would that would be valid too. Right. So uh, the idea is that you want to kind of like overflow and stuff to like basically insert to modify the state into something that's either solvable or already solved uh, and uh, so they, they need to have that okay so we're seeing we're seeing interesting we're seeing calculations we're mm. seeing uh, length calculations uh, unfortunately I was hoping we get some more uh, video from the new organizer up oh, it came in briefly yes there was some debugger output there right yeah um, yeah we'll, we'll leave it up for a second and just kind of show them both and we might be able to see a little bit yep yep see there it's coming on Man, that's tantalizing. That's so mm. mean. Yeah. This this cable is has been. Yeah, we might have to uh, do some shopping. Oh, there is definitely a shopping run tonight. Yes. So we we should be able to have this solved uh, and out of the way, and that way we got a long day, eight hours tomorrow of hopefully uninterrupted stream. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see if that if that turns out to be the case. I mean, given that it's only been, we swapped out the capture card, the USB C cable. The HDMI is the only thing we haven't swapped out, but it's been that same side of the table consistently. Yes. That's been having these problems. Yeah. Makes me think that yeah, we've just got a an HDMI cable that is suspicious. Uh, so we'll yeah. see if we can we, we can get that going. All right. Um, actually, let me. I'm gonna go ahead and do another in-person look. I'm yes. gonna go ahead and take a look at new organizers, and um, we'll be back with an update shortly. Because I debugger is generally a good sign. Yes. I saw. Oh wait. Ooh. Uh oh. Uh, I saw like a bin bash string in the debugger there somehow. But that doesn't really make sense, right? Because there's. Well, really, uh, I mean, with the intended solution, that doesn't mean they're not going to do. Oh no! Yeah. And there uh, also is the. So I, I'm trying to remember how the win function runs. It may just show. It may be from the win function, on the stack as well too. I don't remember. But no, they shouldn't be getting to that. Yes. Let's see. I don't see the. In in the meantime, I wanted to take like the like just ask people who are uh, watching whether you are like uh, any is anyone here in uh, in Vegas attending DefCon or are you, are you watching from uh, all over the world? Like, who do we have here? I think we saw someone chat? from Kenya even uh, chimed in earlier. Oh wow! That they were watching, so we know yeah. we do have yeah uh, some worldwide it's watchers. Be interesting to go and see those uh, like analytics afterwards. See uh, who's watching. Um, but yeah, it's uh, do we have any people? So and. By the way, like if you are um, if you are here at DefCon, uh, 
you know, feel free to come by in the, the CPF uh, area. Uh, we probably know. won't be able to talk a, a ton, but uh, hopefully yeah, we get like some if breaks. Yeah, you come, if you come during matches, you can watch the matches. If you come between matches, uh, you yeah. can, uh, you know, have a chat with uh, us, hopefully, uh, if we're not panicking. Uh, yeah, someone's watching from the CTF floor. Okay, nice. And also from Europe in the hotel room, giving your feet a break. Yeah, that's a wise decision, I I'm, think. I'm ready for my, my feet, my throat. Like several parts of me need a break. Oh at this yeah, point. yeah. I mean, we've been talking here for like. Okay, so there's hours this now. is interesting. These these uh, there's ASCII values are being converted to integers on, on this. So we we we're looking at debugger dump of the game state, mm, nice, right? So nice. we could see, we do see the the game state. The zero, you know, it's really obvious to see those those numbers. Cool. Um. Yeah, and you can see. Uh, Look at that base uh, thing there. You have like generating a list of integers from zero to 96, which is interesting. Is that, uh, yeah. We have watchers from Estonia, Brazil, people who are saying they, they want to go diff visit DEF CON in the future. Yeah, I think uh, DEF CON is like, it's a cool event to, to visit. It's. Uh, I, I think they're trying to increase the amount of streaming and online presence as well too. So you probably will be able to find other Streams. I think there's even some webcam, like 360 degree webcam. Virtual cameras are putting up in a couple of the rooms where you can watch what's going on. So, yeah. trying to improve like the, the accessibility. I mean, I'm certainly with with COVID in general. Most conferences have tried to adapt better for. Oh, okay, we have somebody watching right next to our camera. Let's right. hope they don't bump it. Yeah. Um, but anyway, again, checking the code here. They're writing. Um, I'm trying to get a better feel for what they're doing. Like. Again, they're generating like a list of numbers. Uh, okay. Oh, so they need to find like the right uh, offset this, for their overflow. This, like, this actually looks really good. Yes. This actually does look really good. I'm because glad like we let them go. Because once they finish this. Yeah, yeah. If they get the right offsets. Like, let me it, go look it, at the other one, yeah, but we yeah. might be closing in. Yes. So that's that's really cool. Like we can like it, once they get that thing, it's gonna be real quick. Like we are probably gonna miss. Uh, there's a big risk we're gonna miss like the moment but so basically if i'm reading this correctly what i'm trying to do is like find the offset in memory like they're overflowing something and then like how far into this do they want to put uh whatever they are placing there which should be the the solved or solvable uh state um so uh, yeah they they might definitely onto something they're switching the numbers around a little bit Maybe it's that they, so they switched the zeros to a one, uh, which seemed to have crashed the program, and then, then checking why this is happening. Um, yeah, we have someone from Morocco as well, cool. Uh, that's, uh, it's, it's cool to see we have people all over. Uh, I guess the, uh, I'm trying to like, work out like what, what time it is across the world at the moment. Uh, but uh, wait, but the people watching from Europe, it's like in the middle of the night there. Uh, so that's uh, dedication. I uh, hope you're enjoying it. And uh, trying to see here, then they're just quickly looking at the disassembly again, uh, trying to maybe looking for some specific offsets or so. Um, yes, they did get some specific offset, offset to, to put a breakpoint uh, there, right? And then they're also looking at the base. Um, oh yeah, to make the breakpoint in the correct, or maybe not the breakpoint or the, um, the the offset where to inspect the memory. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, people saying they're watching from like, yeah, definitely middle of the night, um, you know. Uh, Awesome, Netherlands represented as well. So, I, I'm seeing some interesting stuff there. But uh, what did you see uh, uh, from, from the organizers? From, from the organizers? Yeah. So the, I, I mean, I hate to take bets. Yeah. Because I've lost a lot of money at this table so far. <laughs> if it, if, uh, if, uh, if this was a, a gambling arrangement, I would I would not be doing so well. But I will. I, I feel also feel like I tend to favor my side of the table. Yeah. And then we've had all these surprise victories from the other ones yeah. uh, pop up several times. But all that said, I do think Team Taiwan has a little bit of a leap. So looking at the new organizers, we've got a script. Uh, it has a bunch of it's some it's a mixture of GDB, some pwn tools, and then as well as you know sending inputs and kind of breaking in. I didn't get the sense that they they had the, 
an overall plan for what to do. Right. But again, I, the, definitely the one thing I've learned is that I don't know what I'm doing anyways. Like it's, it is really hard to understand exactly what's going on in their head and so you're not always right. Um, whereas I will say, it certainly looks like with that offset, right, that we were seeing a, a, a valid solved Sudoku trying to find the right offset to line it up, which sounds like from what I understand of it is, is the intended solution. Um, so we'll see. Yep. It's, uh... Can we can we get some some confirmation? Is the the solution, if is it just misaligning the correct board, a certain number of bytes, will that trigger it essentially? Any correct board at the right offset. So just put the right amount of padding bytes in, and then it will overwrite it the right. Say again. Yep. Uh, then you mark it as salt. Yeah. Oh, just send anything, and it will just mark it as salt. Right. Okay. So what uh, our producer there said was that um, you first you send a uh, uh, solvable uh, state. You overwrite the. Um, the thing, the state with the solvable one, and then you just send something to like trigger the recheck and, and like have it be uh, solved, and then you get the win uh, there. Um, and we can see here they are like working out in a text editor. I think yeah, like, it still looks like they're trying to solve the state as it exists, not overwrite the the state with their solve. Like so, what I saw, oh. but I wonder. I'm, I'm a little afraid. They got the overwrite, but if their exploit didn't try to like send another round for validation, it like overwrote it, but then never. Oh, oh, wow! That would be uh, that would be terrible. Um, so it is possible that they essentially had the right solution. No, that's painful. Just didn't re-trigger it to be able to actually get to the win function. Mm. Um, so we will we will see. Uh, we're only a little bit late, especially actually. We technically we have two more minutes before the original length of this, right. uh, and we're letting it run long just because of the the, the last one of the day, um, and we prefer they have a chance to do it if they can. But there will our voices will give out, and there will be some point which we say, yeah. "Sorry, we're cutting you off," uh, but none of us want that to happen. So, so we'll see. Yeah, we're taking a, we're taking bets here and uh, hoping this will work. Um, We're also about to lose power on our, our chat. Yes. Tunisia, excellent, welcome. Yeah, I've been to Tunisia for a CTF competition. Have you really? I actually, I think I got invited to speak there one time at a conference. And yeah. There we go. Um, so. Let's uh, see if that actually powers it. I don't know what this is plugged into at this point. Yeah, yeah power, we have there power we on our, one of our screens here. That's All right, great. good. And that uh, we also have like a graphical glitch on the mouse and screen but it's just it's just blocking the ads so i'm okay with it that sounds great that's okay, i wish right. i wish all of my graphics glitches just blocked out ads as i surfed oh on yeah the web. so uh as an employee of a big ad tech uh, company i would have to uh, <laughs> a, a large tech uh, company <laughs> whose revenue might depend heavily on ad yeah uh you know yeah are, yeah are you allowed to run ad blockers no nah, i'm not gonna make you talk at work i'm not gonna make you talk at work <laughs> all right all right i'm not gonna do that all right so here we go So I s this still feels like we're trying to solve it. I don't. I don't see. I don't see the the uh, the exploit. Like I don't see them actually like exploiting it. Well, I mean, this might still work. Like if their idea is to just like overwrite a couple of values sure. and then make it solvable and then well, put it into solution. Like, but it's they're not a fast solution. They're going to inherently have to overwrite the whole thing, though, right? Because they're just linearly overwriting well, it. Well, I mean, it might be that they think that they can only overwrite like the beginning of it or something like this. You're still going to have a null at the end. So no, no, well, well, no not necessarily, because it's going to convert in red. Yeah, no, that's okay. That's fair. I mean, it could, it could work. Like, it's not the not not the intended play, but uh, it could probably work. So yeah. Unless there's a question mark at the very end of the puzzle. If there's an unallocated one at the very end, that would have to be, well, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. All right. 
few more, few, few more bits. Thanks everybody for hanging with us. This has been like just utterly exhausting and super exciting. Um, just as a quick recap, you know, from our from our earlier games, we had uh, a nail biter of a finish at the very beginning from uh, Shellfish versus PTB WTL. Oh yeah, like they were. I think within a few keystrokes of each other, yeah. like you can't get a tighter match. Like I know. we were looking at one screen as they about were about to declare a winner. Yeah, and then the other one won. Like, it popped. It just was so quick. Yeah, so that was fantastic. Make sure you go back and check the uh, the replay on that one. Uh, we're yeah. gonna end the stream today when we're we're done with this particular challenge. Um, oops, sorry about that. I hit the microphone. Uh, we're gonna end the stream today uh, once we're we're done with this challenge, and, and we wrap it up. But uh, we'll, we'll be back tomorrow, a long day tomorrow. So the stream is going to run for eight hours straight. Uh, actually, I guess nine at least because we've got eight challenge. No, no, that's right. Eight, it's, eight total it's, hours. It's eight Each hours. one's a one-hour thing. Yeah. We'll see. We may end up needing a break. Well, we're going to try to get breaks by taking trading off. You're going to see some guest uh, commentators. We're going to have some other people come in and fill out yeah. uh, different roles. Should we? Uh, I think it was already written on Twitter, but the the idea is to have uh, we have a, a, a live overflow. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, joining in. And uh, Camosa, yep. uh, Brandon Falk. Uh, yep. So two uh, popular uh, people in like the uh, security, uh, like content creation uh, space. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm ex excited. Uh, looking forward to uh, to chatting with both of them. Uh, and I'm also looking forward to have a break. And as we each get to, yes. maybe maybe alternate uh, every other round. So one of us will will we we'll get to take a rest. And also. Uh, make sure we give our producer Glenn uh, a break as well. So yeah, we'll be cycling through that. Um, we've got uh, a variety of different challenges. Um, maybe for any of the teams that happen to be listening, we want to talk about like the overall types of challenges that we have. No, no, no super spoilers, but like I will say, I think we're pretty representative. Right. Right. There we've is seen a uh, heavy pwn focus, a little yes. bit of RE. Yes. There's. Um, uh, certainly a little bit like shell coding or constrained exploitation. Um, solution. Just having a quick look here again. Yeah, trying to get caught back up. Oh, oh man. So and they have a solution there, right? So they, they're solve script. This is, I mean, it's, they have a solve solution, but. Yeah. There's a hashtag free Jordan, Glenn, and Kalle uh, in yes. the chat. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, just to clarify, that's my uh, nickname or like, uh, and then, so, yeah. Uh, in, in, in the chat. Pack harder. Thank you. Yes. I mean, if uh, thank you, uh, Negasora, this random person who showed up in our chat. <laughs> Certainly not the author of this particular challenge that has uh, stymied our opponents for so long. So. Right. Yeah. He, but but uh, you're not wrong. It's if they just would hack harder, we could we could take a break and we could. Yeah. Uh, we get could get some dinner. So. Uh, Let's let us consider it is. I would say we are going to have to hit sudden death pretty soon because we're looking at another several minutes of sudden death as well. So, um, we'll yeah. uh, we'll we'll take a look. Maybe I'll take one more pass at new organizers. We'll talk about having a uh, you know queuing up a sudden death. We'll kind of consider what we want to go. Um, yeah, I'll uh, I'll go ahead and give a bit of a oh just use a data glove. That's a what that's is a data glove? That's a reference I don't get. Uh, isn't that the uh, the the game controller thing? The, no, that's, no, that's a power, the power glove. That's a power, that's power glove. glove. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the child yes. of the eighties, of course. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, no. I mean, yes. Wait, that's like Sam, from before Sam, I was born. Sam, no trolling. No trolling. Please, please stay. No, yeah, stay no, 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 no. Uh, no. We, we will. We will find you. You're yeah, in the room. Yeah, we remember yeah. this. No, yeah, we don't. We don't talk like that. That's, no. Uh, yeah. yeah. Don't use it. Yeah. Next, you're going to be asking for for network forensics or something. Something we, crazy. Yeah. We might call the goons. Yeah. Uh, have, have them take you out of the room. Yeah. All right. I'll go check out new organizers and we'll be back. Definitely. I'll give uh, an update on the um, DefCon CTF scoreboard uh, in the meantime. Um, so, we uh, have like a slightly larger spread now. Uh, with uh, like spanning from just a below 14,000 up to uh, just above 18,000 points between the 16th and the first uh, place with uh, Katsubin in first place, MMM in second place and Perfect Root in third place. And if I'm not misremembering, I think uh, last year we did have like a top fight between Katsubin and uh, PPP as well. They have kind of pulled ahead those two teams and created like a slight gap down to third place. So uh, I do think this uh, like mirrors uh, some of what we saw last year uh, with, with uh, regards to like the standings. But 
this is only the first day of the DEFCON CTF. A lot of stuff can happen. Uh, this is like far from over. Uh, so we're, we're going to be keeping uh, an eye on that um, throughout the weekend and give you updates. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, if you're here in the, the CTF room, you can see this really uh, funny uh, visualization that the Nautilus Institute had put up. It's like some 3D uh, animation of like a bunch of weird uh, uh, machines, uh, one for each team, like spitting random objects at the other teams, like showing, I guess it's showing like who is attacking whom. Uh, possibly there's like seashells and stuff uh, flying around. Uh, you know, I guess there's some joke about there about like shells and seashells and you know that. Um, but again, taking a look at um, the um, screen of Balson here, I'm, I'm still not entirely sure. We, they have this like partial solution or like a solution. They have split up the solution into two parts and then um, trying to send some, like they're sending some data and then they're sending the other solution. Still not exactly sure what's going on. Uh, so we have explanation of data handler crazy keyboards. Yeah, I will have to look that up uh, afterwards. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I still think uh, I'm still thinking power gloves would uh, you know really help out in this situation. Uh, maybe you could have them like uh, you know different like uh, rock gadgets and stuff mapped to the uh, different buttons and stuff. That's uh, you know the way to go. Anyway, you can see uh, them like in the debugger here, inspecting the memory there a little bit. Uh, so I'm looking at the global variables. You can see you have the standard in the standard out uh, object and then further down, they have these objects. And you can see you can the byte values there uh, in the like the middle of the of the printed out block uh, with the different digits of the Sudoku solution. Um, yeah, it, 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 like, it feels like they are very close to, to getting it, but still like a bit unsure exactly what's going on. Um, so uh, yeah, we have uh, Jordan coming back here now, so uh, we'll get an update on, on, on where right. we are. We are going to give them a sudden death hint. We're going to give them a hint that is just because here's here's the, the thing that we have missed talking about it so far. I was looking back over with the, the example solution and the, 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 the nuance here is that there's a length check that that we've been that has been kind of showing up a little bit now. Length check basically um, prevents you from even if you overwrite it with a fully solved board from actually solving it on that throw. Okay. So you overwrite the state of the board all but the last one. Right. And the last one you leave empty, and then you can just solve it by overwriting the correct last answer. I see. So it's a little bit along the lines what we've been talking about, but it seems that they've done like a weaker variant of that where. Uh, it, it, they didn't have like as good of a solution. Uh, there's a question chat here about uh, is there anywhere that explains the CTF format? There's an AD going on as well as these one ones. Yes. So, kind of like the main uh, the main CTF, the DEFCON CTF is the uh, traditional uh, DEFCON attack defense uh, that you know we all know and love. Uh, although you know there've been like variants and twists to it uh, over the years. Um, then. Within this competition, this live CTF is like a sub event where uh, it's running parallel to the attack defense uh, aspect of this. So each team sends uh, one player for each match, and then we play this uh, knockout tournament. And at the end, this will ge uh, generate a ranking from the knockout tournament, which is then fed back in and will uh, affect the scores of the main CTF uh, event. So uh, this will be valuable and might definitely affect the final standings of the DEFCON CTF. I'm not completely aware of like what's like the weighting factor is like how the scoring model works for for the um, CTF. Um, and uh, so, so I, I couldn't tell you like exactly how valuable it is to win the tournament versus getting second place. But we've been trying to find a balance where uh, the teams can definitely I have, not so I'll tell you it. in a second, but yes. uh, first I'm going to go ahead and deliver the hints and I'll be right back and we'll see if we can we can bring this one home. Right. Can you just read me the hints here first? Here we go. So, first attempt, overwrite almost all. Second attempt solves due to length check. Yes. Sounds this is great. the hints and we will see if this does it. Yeah. This is almost like a straight up 
solution. Like, yeah. This could almost well, be like a write-up for the, you know. You have to understand what the program does, and that, oh, that's oh. the state that they've, they've got. Yeah, yeah, but they have heads. that. Yes. Like. So now we're going to give them, like, the, the final, hopefully final hint here that will just, like, hopefully blow this case wide open and, uh, you know, may have them solve it from there. Uh, did we get any uh, reaction from the players on that? I was too busy coming back. I should have I should have watched. Okay, okay, I see. Yeah, we got we we got some forehead touching. Okay. Uh, says says our producer. Yes. Um. So we'll see. Will it? I I, I think this was a, this one. I think is on us. Yeah. I think this was a little too subtle for what we're kind of aiming for. And again, being in a high pressure thing. It's just not to say that these are not excellent exploiters. It is just very hard, and there's, this was a little bit of a little bit nuance, a little subtle nuance. Oh yeah, because I, of the the way that the length check happens in the binary, you can't actually fully overwrite and expect it to do it. It will already know that it's an invalid attempt, mm. and so it's not solvable. But then you have overwritten the the correct state, such that you can then solve it because you moved it from an insolvable state to right. a solvable state. Right. And, Someone else might have got it. You don't know, but it's definitely this is definitely a little harder. It's, certainly, it's it's more subtle than some of our previous challenges. Yes. Um, but but we'll see. We'll we'll do our best to keep keep dialing in the, the difficulty and see how it goes. So let's keep an eye out for the the winner. We may see because we're not looking at the new organizers. Uh, we might get that uh, off screen, uh, or we might see Team Taiwan pull it off here uh, in the main window. So I'm. I'm I keep rooting for for whoever we have the capture card working on, just by very nature of being on my side of the table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, but you know, like uh, being a uh, Swiss not citizen but Swiss resident, I'm you know kind of like uh, maybe rooting for organizers a little bit. Uh, uh -huh. So uh, are, yeah. are they uh, are they a Swiss team? So they Swiss? are a Swiss British American team, okay. I think. Okay. Uh, oh, there we go. All right. So there, you know, we have the winner. Congratulations. Congratulations. Awesome, awesome. Uh, oh my god. Down to the down to the it end. It happened again. It happened right. again. So I'm gonna go you can go congratulate just, them, go talk to the team. I'm gonna go ahead and see see y'all out. Uh, just a quick summary. I think we've already kind of covered what's what's happening the rest of the day. We're gonna go recuperate. We're gonna fix our HDMI cable, so we'll come back with uh, tomorrow. We'll uh, hopefully have uh, the ability to see both screens more effectively uh, instead of having the, the flickering that we had this time. And uh, we look forward to seeing eight challenges. We're going to eight more rounds. We're going to finish up in the morning, four more rounds of round one. And then in the afternoon, we're going to move straight into round two. And we're going to go all the way from eight teams all the way down to four by the end of tomorrow. So come back and uh, see that long day. Look forward to seeing you then. Take care and have a good one.